Hi guys, it's Lynn here. I hope everyone is having an amazing day. Now in this video, I'm going to be talking to you about the 10 best flowering cacti. And I'm going to include, there's plenty and plenty of amazing cactus flowers that you will see. But I'm going to be covering the 10, 10 most sort of easy popular ones and easy ones that are easy to grow in cultivation. So here we go. First of all, guys, I'm going to start off with... Echinopsis, which is these cacti here, and the Echinopsis are commonly known as the sort of hedgehog cacti, domino cacti, sea urchin cacti because of their appearance, especially with these the domino ones with all the little spots on them. And it's quite a large genus, um, that's all the flower buds there and seed pods forming, and they're very, very there's many, many hybrids now and they're sort of very easy to get to flower if you can give them a nice sunny position and a cool, dry winter rest. So that will be my first number one choice for best flowering cacti. And it's a shame because if I'd have filmed this video just a few weeks ago, practically all of these would, all a lot in the polyton would all be in flower, but obviously it's coming to the end of the flowering season now. But I'm going to be putting photos up of my of my plants of the particular species and the genus I'm talking about to show you and I'll also link down below in the video description some of the, um, the videos I've made on these individual plants in flower so Echinopsis will be um, will be my first choice here and as I say I'll show you a photograph now one of my Echinopsis plants in amazing bloom and then second would be Astrophytum now I'm just going to show you here Astrophytums, I have to say, have the most incredible flowers on them. And um, we've got quite a few different types of astrophytums in our collection. I'll just go back up here and show you the two of our sort of largest ones there. It's Astrophytum ornatum and Astrophytum capricorn. And they have the most incredible flowers on them. Huge, usually, usually very yellow, bright, big blooms. There's one of our Astrophytum nudums that's been can be third time coming into into bud again this year so that's exciting and uh, some of our other ones that have been flowering here's another one coming into bud again another one here that's budding so that, that's really great some of our other little astrophytums got a few different types little smally ones here as well gorgeous cacti and uh, they're also easy sort of quite easy to get to flowering cultivation again if you can give them a very sunny position and a nice dry cool winter rest period as well and i'll show you um Photograph now of um, what a mighty beautiful flower. Now, the third one I would say definitely is Gymnocalycium. These are very sort of easy flowering ones as well. Again, very easy to get for sale and an amazing huge genus with Gymnocalycium. There's our, one of our other Gymnocalyciums there. That's been constantly blooming. This is one of our Gymnocalycium baldianum there, always blooming. Again, this is late summer now, almost into the fall. And there's been so many blooms, a nice seed pod forming there. Very easy bloomers too. And I'm going to show you a photograph of one of ours in beautiful bloom now. Now, the next, the next genus, I would say, number four will be Mammillaria. Now, Mammillaria, this is sort of our, quite a few of our Mammillaria collection here. They're not the most, the, the flowers are not the most amazing to see. They're usually very tight. Well, they are very tiny flowers. Some, some Mammillarias produce larger flowers, but most of them tend to be very small and form a little ring around the plant. They're, but they're very, very, very pretty and they're very easy to get to flower. And this particular one here was very beautiful this year with all the little flowers on it. I'm going to show you a photograph of that now. And uh, as you can see, it's a huge, huge gen. But they're very easy to flower. Again, a, cool, a sunny position and a cool, dry winter rest period. So that will be my fourth choice. Now, the fifth choice will be Epiphyllum. I'm going to take you outside here to show you. This is our... Our epiphyllums here in the yard and so these were blooming amazing all over the uh, the springtime and lots of different types here the foot so these have incredible flowers and i'll show you um this is the the german empress epiphyllum it has incredible beautiful pink flowers and i'll show you a photograph of what these look like in beautiful flower only um, a few months ago now in the spring again epiphyllum they had come now these epiphyllums completely different care requirements entirely to the desert cacti and these do prefer to be kept uh, still lightly watered in a little bit during the winter and they can take pretty cold temperatures but they can't take uh, 
too much uh, damp and cold because they can be very sort of the stems can become quite damaged if they get too much cold so they're not maybe as cold hardy as some of the very strong desert cacti would be but they can certainly take more humidity than many of the other ones but I have made a whole different video on how to care for epiphyllum because the care is very different so if you haven't seen that video do check that video out on how to care for and grow epiphyllum links will be up above and also down below in the video description Number six would be Parodia stroke notocactus because a lot of the notocactus now have been put into the Parodia and that's our Parodia that was flowering beautiful only uh, only the other day actually it's just coming to the end I think there's a seed pod form in there the flowers are amazing on these and I just show you some, some more of our little Parodias here and our Parodia atonis here and there's two seed pods forming on that one there which is really exciting and this particular one here this is Parodia rubra chrysocanthium orange flame as you can see that's all the dead flower heads and it had the most incredible flowers on it again these Parodia notocactus they're very easy to get to flower and I just show you the here this is Parodia magnifica as well and some of our other Parodia magnificas very easy to get to flower if you give them a nice sunny position and uh, I usually find that Parodia can take a lot more sort of moisture, in, especially in the spring and summer, a lot more watering than a lot of the other cacti can. If you give them a, keep them well watered, let them dry out slightly in between waterings during spring and summer, they'll flower readily in a nice sunny position. And again, a cool and dry winter rest period um, will also encourage blooming as well on these beauties. I'm going to show you a photograph now of what the Prodra Chrysocarthin Rubra Orange Flame looked like this spring. Now number seven would be Slumbergera. And if you go, what the hell is Slumbergera? Well, it's commonly known as the Thanksgiving and Christmas cactus. And this is it here. Now the Thanksgiving and Christmas cactus are two different types of Slumbergera because the, the Christmas, true Christmas cactus, the flowers hang down and the thanksgiving the flowers are more erect on them but they're pretty much the same as, as in the flowers and the ease of flowering very easy cactus to grow um, they prefer to have a little bit more shade this actually gets a little, little bit too much sun believe it or not in the polytunnel even though our polytunnel is slightly shaded with a green cover but it does well and it flowers absolutely every year with the most incredible of blooms so i'm going to show you a uh, photograph of what this exact um, very old, possibly six years, possibly even older, Slumbergera Christmas uh, Thanksgiving cactus, I should say, looks like in flower now. And I have made a video on how to grow and care for the Christmas and Thanksgiving cacti, so do check that video out if you haven't done already. I'll put the links up above and down below in the video description. But they're very, very easy flowering. Now, the Easter cactus, Ripsalidopsis, the reason why I'm not including that is because although the flowers are gorgeous on them, I personally don't find them the easiest cacti to grow. Um, Easter cactus is a lot more temperamental, especially when it comes getting it to flower. Um, that's only in my opinion now so um, that's why I'm not including that in this one but again it's a lovely another lovely flowering one too now number eight is going to be Matukana and here we go we have quite a few little Matukanas in our collection here four different types that is the Matukana palsy and I pollinated the flowers earlier and sea pods are forming there they'd soon be ready to be harvested probably in a couple of weeks or so as you can see there's the seed pods there's um Batacana here Madisonorum that has been that had th three huge blooms only a couple of weeks ago and there's another bud forming there and another one on the side so that's very exciting and another Matacana Madisonorum as well two little buds on there forming so it's great for this late in the season and they're very easy to get to flower as well beautiful cacti they often get mistaken for the uh, Lophophora which are these cacti here these are um, known as the peyote cacti and matucana especially the madison orm one as you can see here often gets mistaken for lophophore because it's very similar but they are very different matucana again loves a lovely sunny position and a dry core winter rest period and you're pretty much guaranteed to get blooms on them so then number nine would be fellow cactus and i'm going to show you here are the telocactuses that we've got here. This is my telocactus uh, bicolor. Has beautiful pinky silky blooms on it. Really, really beautiful. 
and um, that is a very good very good one to grow as well highly recommend it um, I have a few different there's another one of our little telocactuses here as well a few different varieties and they're sort of great bloomers if you again give them a nice sunny position a dry cool winter rest period and I'll show you what this particular fellow cactus looks like when it's in bloom now and then last but certainly not least rebuchias these are our little rebuchia collection here and I'm also going to include with the rebuchia the sulco rebuchia which is this one here these are great easy flowering they're actually easy cacti to grow as long as you can pot them on regularly they like to be repotted every couple of years unlike some cacti that can go years sometimes without being repotted as long as you give them a good fertilizing these are reluctant to flower if you don't pot them regularly so if i know with my rebuccia they don't seem to flower one year it's usually because they're in need of a repot so that's just a little tip for you if you grow these but these are great flowers. now the one good thing about rebuccias is that they can take extremely cold winter temperatures even in our sort of climate here in Ireland and the UK as long as you can keep them totally dry over the winter I know some growers here in Ireland who actually keep a big selection of rebuccia in their greenhouses without any heating at all and it gets to well below sometimes minus five and they have no problems um, as long as they're kept totally dry over the winter and again, these rebuchias um, also, they can take sort of full sun, but they can also take more shade as well, partial sun, and they're very, very free flowering. Since I'm going to show you what this one, this is Suko rebuchia, I'm going to show you what this beauty looked like this year in full flower. So there we go, guys. That's my top 10 flowering cacti. But as I say, I could go on and on and on. <laughs> and I wanted to include the ones that you most commonly see for sale because there is so many others I could go. I mean, there's uh, punchers have the most remarkable flowers on them, but they're not easy to get to flowering cultivation. We've had our, a, punch, a puncher salmiana that's been flowering for us and there's buds on there. So that's good. Um, but they're not the easiest to get to flower unless you live in a very sunny climate and uh, obviously you have them outdoors as well but not possible here in uh, in ireland so guys thank you so much for watching and if you want to know how you can get your cacti and succulents to flower then please do check out a video i have made on how to get your cacti and succulents to flower links up above and also if you want to know know my special trick to encourage more flowers on your cacti and succulents i like to use tomato feed used at half strength from spring and summer and do check out a video i've made on why i like to use tomato feed to fertilize my cacti and succulents links also up above and down below in the video description and uh, if you want to know the top five cactus plants to grow for beginners, if you're a beginner, then do check out a video I've made on the top five cactus plants for beginners. Links also up above and down below. And if you haven't done already, please do subscribe and uh, do check out my website for lots more tips and tricks on how you can care for and grow your cacti and succulents. DesertPlantsOfAvalon.com I want to send you loads of love, heaps of happiness, and tons and tons of cactus power from across the Emerald Isle. And until my next video, bye.